So this presentation is entitled 80 GHz Waveform Generation by Optical Fourier Synthesis of Four Spectral Size Bands. Those results have been obtained at the Laboratoire Interdisciplinaire Canot Bourgogne from the University of Burgundy in Dijon in France by Julien Fatome, Kemal Amani, Bertrand Kibler and myself, Christophe Finot. So here is how this uh, presentation will be organized. As an introduction, I will recall uh, what is a waveform generator and optics and what is the techniques that are currently used. And then I will describe the approach that we will specifically study in this presentation. This is the optical Fourier synthesis. I will then discuss our experimental result obtained at 40 GHz using the direct phase modulation of a continuous wave and I will show some improvement of this technique to reach a repetition rate of 80 GHz and this time we use the kernel linearity occurring in a nonlinear fiber. So lasers now offer a large range of temporal duration, wavelength and repetition rate. But the waveform for picosecond of femtosecond pulses remain, however, often restricted to Gaussian or hyperbolic second profiles. However, for some application, it could be interesting to have other pearl shapes, such as a parabola, a triangular, or flat top pulse. Or it could also be interesting to have a device that could be reconfigurable. So there is one technique that already answers all the needs. This is uh, the widely used linear spectral pulse shaping technique. And how does it work? You have an input pulse that is very short and you have a target that is usually longer than your input pulse. And you will make the shaping in the spectral domain. So you will uh, have the input uh, spectrum. Here, this is a Fourier transform of the input uh, complex field, and your target will be defined in the spectral domain. And to generate your target from your input, you need to multiply your input by a transfer function that is just given by the ratio between your target and your input waveform. Here, this transfer function is complex. Well, this technique works very well, and you now have a wide range of commercial products with some turnkey commercial products at telecommunication wavelength. There is another way to generate this advanced waveform. It is to benefit from the progressive reshaping that occurs in a nonlinear fiber thanks to the combination between a normal dispersion and care nonlinearity. And with uh, this process, you, are, you can generate parabolic waveform or triangular waveform. This is a process that is very efficient in terms of energy. Our approach will be, however, quite different. And what we will use, this is optical Fourier synthesis. So here, we restrict our study to a pulse strain at a very high repetition rate. So in this case, the spectrum becomes discrete with well-separated spectral lines. And this transfer function uh, to be applied will also be discrete so that you will only have a few spectral lines to consider. Typically, people use a dozen of spectral lines to obtain a good result. And uh, the question uh, that arises this is how uh, many components needs to be involved. What is the minimum number of spectral components that you have to deal with? So there have been very nice results that have been obtained using five spectral components. It has been published last year in Optica. And uh, using five lasers that are stabilized and that are coherent, uh, it is possible to generate very nice waveforms. But is it possible to have nice results 
with less spectral components. For example, with two components. Of course, with two, what you will generate, it only give you a sinusoidal waveform. But we can investigate the potential of a spectrum based on three or four spectral components. So here we will restrict ourselves to symmetric waveform so that the spectrum will also be symmetric. And what is nice, this is that we can describe the case of three or four components only by using two parameters, which are the ratio between the central and lateral side bands that we call A, and the uh, phase shift between the inner and outer uh, side bands. We uh, call, call it, it phi. So what we will do, uh, it will be to make an exhaustive analysis of the impact of these two parameters, both in the three and four uh, spectral component configurations. And to, uh, to quantitatively uh, express the result, we will use a cost function. It is a misfit function between the intensity profile that is generated and the target. And what we found in this study, uh, here we will start with the example of parabolic pulse generation. This is that when we only use three components, then the misfix factor is still quite high. However, if we use a four components model, the misfix factor for a small range of parameters will significantly decrease and will go below 0 0.02, which uh, is synonym of nice waveform. And what we see from this study also, this is that the spectral phase is more critical, in fact, than the attenuation uh, ratio. Here in this uh, region, you can change the attenuation and you can still obtain some very nice results. However, if you change the phase offset, then the shape will not be parabolic anymore. You will have another waveform. So here is uh, the temporal profile obtained at 40 gigahertz by numerical uh, simulation. You see that you have something that is very close from a parabolic field. It is a high quality parabolic pulse strain. However, here, uh, the this is not a Fourier transform parabolic pulse. This is normal. We have put some phase offset on the spectral component. So the spectral phase is not flat. There is no reason to have a temporal, temporal flat phase. And here, in fact, it doesn't matter because our target, it was to generate a parabolic intensity profile. We have not put any constraint on the temporal, on the temporal chop profiles. This has enabled us to have less constraints and to have less, uh, much uh, more flexibility and to reduce then the number of spectral lines that we use. This is the difference between the use of perhaps dozens of spectral components that will enable you to uh, have a Fourier transform um, parabolic waveform. So now here are the results obtained for triangular pulse. You can see that you also obtain some very interesting uh, triangular uh, waveforms. And if you just change the phase, you are able to generate some inverted parabola or some flat top uh, waveforms. So here you just have to play in fact with the phase if you have the good ratio between uh, the uh, inner and outer side bands of your spectrum. So let uh, now discuss how we can uh, implement it experimentally. So we start from a continuous wave. This Continuous wave, we will phase modulate it using a standard phase modulator driven by a 20 gigahertz clock. And we will obtain a very small combo frequency that are spaced by 20 gigahertz. 
And here is the experimental uh, demonstration of this comp, whose results here are uh, obtained at telecommunication wavelength. And then we will make the shaping. So we will make simultaneously several operations. The first operation that we do, it is to cancel one spectral component over two, starting from the central frequency. And do exist, doing this, what we do is to double the repetition rate. So we now have a 40 gigahertz repetition rate and we have the four spectral component spectrum that we want to manipulate. The second operation, it is to imprint the correct attenuation between the various sidebands and also to put the phase shift between the sidebands. And all this can be done in a single operation. And here are the experimental result before the linear shaper and after the commercial linear shaper. We see that we still here have some residual a uh, spectral line, but it will not affect the quality of our experimental result because the level is uh, is reduced. And we monitor the result using an optical sampling oscilloscope that has a resolution of around one picosecond. And what we can observe, this is the generation of a very nice parabolic profile. So here we can say that uh, the, the experimental device wa works as expected. And when we change the phase between the inner and outer components, we see that we immediately change the intensity profile. So we can switch from one waveform to the other waveform, just playing with the phase offset. And doing so, we can see that we can obtain very nice triangular uh, pulses or flat top waveforms. So let's now see how we can increase the repetition rate. And to do this, the problem is that our previous experimental setup cannot be easily scaled to higher repetition rate. Indeed, it becomes uh, difficult here to increase the repetition rate and moreover the linear shaping stage has a quite poor efficiency. So we will use another approach and this time we we'll start again with a continuous wave but we will use an intensity modulator driven by a clock at 40 gigahertz and we will use the intensity modulator at its point of null transformation. So at this point, the repetition rate is double and we have a carrier suppressed wave. And then we will use a nonlinear stage of propagation in an optical fiber. So we use a highly nonlinear fiber and in this fiber, the sinusoidal intensity profile will experience some self-phase modulation and it will generate uh, the sidebands that uh, outers, the outer side, and it will increase the, the level. So we will, with this, obtain the four uh, central sidebands that we target. And what is very nice in this process, this is that you can directly tune the ratio between uh, the central and uh, lateral sidebands by playing with the input average power that you send in the sideband, in the fiber. So experimentally give uh, this setup. Here we have uh, added a power method just to monitor the level of the Buiwen backscattering that ultimately limits the performance of the highly nonlinear fiber. So uh, there are some ways to control this Buiwen backscattering so that we could directly have uh, the good result. Uh, then after the generation of this four sideband spectrum, you can use a stage of linear shaping. And the detection here is a bit different from the previous experiment. We have here used a complex optical spectrum analyzer. 
So let's see the result. First, here is the spectrum at the input of the highly nonlinear fiber. We have uh, mainly two, some, uh, two components, and the spectrum get now new components uh, thanks to the surface modulation that occurs in the highly nonlinear fiber. During the stage of uh, filtering, we have here remove the additional sideband. In fact, uh, they are not detrimental, so we could have kept them. We have also uh, cancelled here this uh, small uh, residual uh, sideburns. And uh, what we have also done in this stage of filtering, this is to change the phase between uh, the lateral and central sidebands. And if needed, we have also slightly adjust the attenuation level. And here are the results that we have recorded. And once again, we can check that the principle of our method works perfectly. We obtain high quality triangular or parabolic waveform. And we can check here uh, that those waveforms are not Fourier transform, but uh, we know the reason. And if we change slightly the phase shift, we also obtain some uh, flat top pulses, inverted parabola of this kind of double peaked uh, waveform. So it is now time for conclusion. We have shown both uh, numerically and experimentally that four spectral sidebands are enough to synthesize triangular parabolic flat top uh, waveform. Compared to the usual linear spectral shaping technique, here we have removed the constraint of uh, on uh, the temporal fast profile. Uh, we uh, have also shown that we can switch from one waveform to the other waveform just by tuning the spectral phase shift between the inner and outer components. And our experimental demonstration carried out at 40 or 80 gigahertz are convincing. And we have shown that we can benefit from a nonlinear stage of propagation in a highly nonlinear fiber to generate efficiently the four uh, initial sidebands that are required to our approach.